Welcome to the general introduction to our software interface. Before we get started, I'd like to let you know about personal touch projects. The last section of some tutorials will have short projects that work with you to customize your interface so that you're not only able to understand the interface, but master it as well. The first section we'll be going over is the top bar. This section will contain some of the principal functions for customization in running your day-to-day -day tasks. The first item we'll be looking at is the user menu, located by clicking on the username in the top right corner. The user menu's most basic functions are the user settings, manage applications, which we will cover in a separate tutorial, support, help, and the ability to log out of the platform. To the left of the username, you'll see three vertical dots. These dots represent a menu icon. This menu specifically is for customizing your top panel. By checking and unchecking the boxes listed here, you can add and take away panels depending upon their necessity for your operations. Now that we have the tabs we'll be using, let's see how they function. By clicking on any of these tabs, we can see they all change the panel to the left of the map. This panel is called the work area and represents the tab that we've selected. Some tabs allow you to create new items. If you have the available permission, you'll see a new button at the top of that work area. After using the system for a while, these lists can get rather long. If you already know the name of an item, you can use the search bar in the top right of the work area to find it more quickly. It should be noted that search bars only search for the tab selected. The work area can also be adjusted to expose more or less of the map at any given time. You can even slide the window all the way to the left to make your whole window just the map. This takes us to the bottom bar. If you decide to slide the work area all the way over to the left, you'll notice that the bottom left icon becomes gray. This means the work area has been hidden. When you need to bring the work area back, just click this icon again and it'll fill with white letting you know the work area is visible again. To the right of this icon, you'll see the Show Hide Minimaps icon. We'll get deeper into this in a later tutorial, but when you need to hide them or pull them back up, just click here. The gold star to the right, past our company name, is What's New icon. This icon will allow you to see the most recent updates in our interface. To the right of the What's New icon, you'll see a section containing three different buttons, all of which pull up their own window. The first of these three is Online Notifications, allowing you to see all notifications from that session. The middle icon being Chat with Drivers, which will be covered extensively in a later tutorial. The last of these being Media from Units, which will allow you to see the video and images in your current session. To the right of this section, we'll see a singled out icon that allows you to show logs, or recording of what's happening on the server from your account's perspective. The last item we can see here in the bottom right of the screen is the clock. This shows the time zone specified in your user settings. The next section of this video is a personal touch project. There are several of these throughout the training videos that will help you customize your platform to work effortlessly for your operations. In this personal touch project, we'll specifically be going over user settings that are the foundation for your user access. Under user settings, go ahead and select your primary language. Mine's going to be English. Select your time zone. I live in central time. Select your daylight savings time. Mine will be US and Canada. Select your date format. Mine will be capital MMM, lowercase dd, and lowercase yyyy. In my case, I've created my own date format using the key by hovering over the key map to customize this date. This will make my date appear as Jan 1st, 2020. Select a time format. Personally, I like HHMMSSTT, although if you like military time, you can select an option with the capital H's instead. Then select your first day of the week. Mine will be Sunday. Select your measurement system. Mine is in the US. And for the last part of this section, select your city. Mine will be Dallas, Texas. Although if I desired, I could also choose a state, territory, or country if I wanted to be less specific. Now, let's select the security section of the user settings on the left-hand side. We'll want to make sure we have a valid email here in case we ever forget our password. This will be a recovery email. For the last part of our project, we'll be customizing our address format and maps. Let's select maps from the left-hand side. Firstly, 
Go ahead and scroll to the bottom of the section to find address format. I like my addresses to be structured with the house number and then the street name. In order for me to correct this for my operations, I'll need to click and drag the house above the street. My personal business only operates within the US, so I'll go ahead and uncheck country as well so that I don't have unnecessary text and fields in my reports. Let's go back up to the map source and select the maps we'll want to use for our operation. For this example, I'll be using Bing. Let's make sure our maps were added. Go ahead and select OK in the bottom right corner of the user settings window. If you take a look at the top left side of the map, you'll see a few icons. We're going to look at the map icon first. I'm currently on my default map with no overlay. I'm going to select an overlay first, and in this case, Bing traffic. And then I'm going to select Bing maps. At the top of these icons, you'll see a magnifying glass. This is a map search and can be used to search for specific addresses on your map. Under the search bar, there will be an eye icon. This icon allows you to add and remove visible layers on your map. For example, here I'll remove unit monitoring so I can see where my geofences are. Lastly, you can see the plus, minus, and scale bar. This allows you to zoom in and out of the map. Let's say you want to get a closer look at Bus 1 Florida, so you can see the names of the surrounding streets. First, zoom in the map to the street level using the scale bar, then click on the unit name. Congratulations and thank you for completing our introduction. I hope by now you feel a little more at ease when operating through our platform. To further extend your knowledge of our platform, check out other video tutorials for more specific trainings. I'll see you next time.